Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCM Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. I'm going to be joined in the next segment with Gerald Salenti. And one of the things I want to talk to him about is, of course, economic trends. He covers trends in a wide variety of areas. Uh, before I get to that, though, there's some breaking news that's up on Infowars.com from uh, Jonathan Oosting. NRA celebrates new Michigan laws exempting gun records from public disclosure. Now, the interesting thing about this is that when you compare it to the other article that's uh, another article up on Infowars.com from Mikhail Thalen, where the SWAT team in Massachusetts is refusing a freedom of information request from the ACLU saying, we're a private organization. We're not going to give you any statistics about what we do or how often we do it. And uh, totally closing them off. And to which the ACLU said, well, uh, if you are truly a private organization, then you're breaking the law. But contrast that to what was going on in Michigan. You had people in Michigan, this, this law in Michigan as well uh, is, is a response to what was going on in New York as well, where people were using freedom of information requests to get information about individual gun owners. That's not what FOIA was about. FOIA was there to give us transparency and insight into what our government is doing, not to let us spy on our neighbors. So they're celebrating the fact that uh, they now have a new Michigan law that will protect gun records. These are private records. They should not be subject to FOIA requests. There's no reason for the public to have that information. If you look at that article, there's a great picture on there of a gun done by somebody named Travis Knight, my son. I think it's a great picture. Now. Gerald is going to be joining us in just a little bit, Gerald Salenti. And, of course, yesterday we had uh, some economic revision. You know, they love to revise these economic numbers as they go along. They give us one number, and then the next quarter they say, well, you know, it was actually worse than we thought, but now it's improving. Well, this was a major revision. A, a article that's up on Infowars.com says the U.S. economy has collapsed this is a monstrous negative revision. We're not talking about a recession. We're talking about a collapse, and that's by Max Slavo. Now, other people have reported on this. We've got uh, Market Watch saying the economy stumbles and a first quarter historic fall. They say the 2.9% drop in GDP is the biggest during economic expansion since World War II. That kind of puts it in perspective. We see another one here from Bloomberg. They say, well, it's the most in five years. <laughs> you know, you can pick your points to try to make, uh, to make it read any way you want to. But then, of course, Obama wants it to look as though it's anybody's fault but his own. And this is uh, an article from thefederalist.com. They say the economy tanked last quarter and it's everybody's fault but Obama. And they point out how uh, the liberal organizations like uh, Think Progress and, of course, Huffington Post will come in and say, hey, uh, it was good that things didn't fall as much as we thought because, um, and one of the reasons is because healthcare spending is on the rise. That's a good thing. And as he points out in this article, he said, hey, I thought uh, Obamacare was supposed to reduce our healthcare costs. Of course it wasn't. It was there to make profits for the insurance companies that wrote it. And then, of course, this tweet from Huffington Post, Obamacare just saved the economy from contraction. Ah, but then they find out that it's not 1% decline, but it's now a 3% decline. So now they've got to find uh, a cause. Well, guess what? The cause was the weather. It was the winter, you know. It was a uh, very cold winter. And, of course, uh, MarketWatch.com picks up on that. They said the cold weather cost the U.S. economy about $15 billion. Maybe. And they're a little bit skeptical because this is a, a yet another revision. And, of course, there are many other factors. But, of course, Obama jumps in with the weather, but he has a completely different take on it. Okay, he's going to save the economy and save us with global warming measures. Okay, he says his initiatives are going to combat global warming and save consumers more than $60 billion in energy costs. This is the Washington Post's take on that. Well, of course, you're going to then pay twice that amount of money. If you really do save it on energy costs, you're going to pay twice that amount of money in carbon taxes. 
to people who are private organizations. It's going to be a kind of indulgence that we will pay them for all the energy that we use. But of course, the energy prices are not going to go down because they're shutting down power plants everywhere. But you've got the Washington Post, the New York Times, the LA Times pushing I've that narrative. Stay with us. And herbs. Super male vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I just received my male vitality about three days ago, and I must say that is good stuff. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. I jump out of bed ready to fight these criminals every day. I look forward to waking up and taking my Super Male Vitality and getting the day started. It's not just the Super Male Vitality. All the products at InfoWarsLife.com are simply amazing. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. A chemical spill contaminating the water supply in nine West Virginia counties. This year alone, over 300,000 people in West Virginia had their drinking water contaminated. What are the health effects of having these drugs in our drinking water? It's forced medical treatment without the consent of residents. My friends, water filtration is one of the most basic actions you can take to protect you and your family from the harmful toxins and heavy metals in your tap water. On average, the county says it sprays with the glyphosate at least once a week. Few filters cut out the glyphosate that is found in water supply worldwide. Remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, hydrofluorosilicic acid, sodium hexafluorosilicate. Fluoride, it is in tea, it's in coffee, it's in water, it's in bread, it's in toothpaste. It is our responsibility to protect our families. The establishment's not going to do it. It's time to take action. It's time to filter our water. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and use promo code WATER to get 10% off their entire family of incredible products. Or call toll-free 888-253-3139. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. Most people know that iodine deficiency has been a crisis around the world. Iodine is key to so many of the body's functions, especially the thyroid. I discovered a product being developed by Dr. Group. You now know it as Survival Shield True Nascent Iodine that your body can really absorb. Then, about a year ago, he said, listen, if you think this is powerful, I'm going to come out with rare earth, deep earth crystals. And the results that I personally have had have been life-changing. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. This is innovating, and the best part is it helps fund InfoWars.com, the radio show, the TV show, the whole media operation promoting true libertarian ideas. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. Take advantage of this unprecedented 30% off super detox special at InfoWarsLife.com. Frontal assault on the lies of the New World Order. It's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host for this hour. And joining us this segment is Gerald Salenti, famous trends forecaster, publisher of the Trends Journal. Before I go to Gerald, I want to tell you that we've got some specials of the Alex Jones Show. The, uh, that's what supports the operation at InfoWarsLife.com. We have Survival Shield X2 and Fluoride Shield, two bottles of our best formulas for 30% off and our super detox special for a very limited time while supplies last. Or you can get the fluoride out with our Fluoride Shield formula by itself for 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. And we also, at InfoWarsStore.com, we have a special offer for the ProPure water filters. If you get a ProPure G2.0 big system, you get a free wire stand, as well as use the promo code WATER to save 10% off of your water filter. So check those out. It helps uh, your health, it helps your family, and it helps to support our operation. Now, joining us, as I just said, is Gerald Salenti. His website is trendsresearch.com. His journal, Trends Journal, is put out on a quarterly basis. I've got a copy right here on my desk. It's a nice publication. I want to talk to him about a variety of things. I want to talk about uh, 
economics and his forecast on that. But Gerald is all about the big picture. And in the big picture, of course, war is looming heavy. Because that's a major factor that is driving the people, the people who are making the decisions, who are pushing us into war. And he has a lot to say about that. But, Gerald, welcome. Thanks for having me, David. Thanks for joining us. I, I wanted to first, before we get into uh, the articles that you've got here, you've got one article, Washington is driving the world to the final war. I want to get your comments on that and have you uh, flesh that out for the audience. But before we get to that, I wanted to get your take on this major revision in the economy yesterday from uh, a GDP decline of 1% to all of a sudden tripling it to 3%. And one of the uh, publications pointed out that's the largest decline during expansion since World War II. Yeah, it's also the greatest revision that's ever been done <laughs> yeah. since 1976. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, by the way, the winter up here in the East was terrible. It was one of the worst I ever remember in my life. So there's no question that it, it hit the markets. Mm -hmm. However, the story's bigger than that because you keep looking at the numbers. So let's say we even cut it off, you know, we cut it in half. It was still down by, let's say, 1.5%. Now, this is after dumping trillions and trillions and countless trillions into the economy to prop it up. It's not working. There's other numbers that came out today that verify it. And here are some of them. You start looking at consumer spending. Well, it was down. They expected it to increase, it didn't. Now you're also hearing from one of the Fed chair, or the Fed presidents saying that interest rates may go up as early as the first quarter of 2015. This, David, has been an interest rate recovery, period, paragraph. Not only here, what do they have over there in the European Union? <laughs> Negative interest rates, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Really? I mean, yeah. who would, I mean, if somebody, I'm going up with negative interest, what are you out of your mind? <laughs> the only people this is enriching, and the only reason the equity markets are at where, where, at where they are, is because of interest rates so cheap, cheap and all the cheap money. So let's do the numbers. You're looking at merger, merger and acquisition for the first two quarters of this year that are almost at the height of just before the crash in 2007. We're looking at $10 billion a day worth of merger and acquisition activity. Now, this is at a time when you're looking again at those numbers that you were talking about, there's no GDP growth, it's negative growth. So what do we have? It's screwing the little people. Because when I was a young man, they used to have this quite little thing. They were called savings accounts. So people worked hard, put money away, and the money that they put away was way above the inflation rate. All right. Now you have, have your money in the bank, this is what you get back, you know. You get nothing back. So the only, it's hurting everybody across the board. It's setting up a crisis for retirement and it's also pumping up the housing markets and the equity markets. Again, you look at the numbers, they're all down. Spending is down. Housing isn't that strong, even though we have all this cheap money in there, because first time home buyers, which usually account for over 40% of home sales, that's now down to around 25% because young people get lousy jobs. Oh, and by the way, it's going to get worse because of all the consolidation. So you don't have a housing, it, it, it's, the housing market recovery is minimal when you put it into the grander context. And again, comparing what housing sales are now compared to what they were back you know, when the bubble was being inflated. You also, by the way, you have the housing bubble in China has deflated. The only people that don't know it are the people that don't watch it or that believe the guys that get paid a lot of money to go on CNBC and Bloomberg and report the big lies. 
Because I can tell you firsthand, and it was a trend, that one of the top trends we had in the Trends Journal for 2014,